The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everyone on this Tuesday. I hope everyone had a very good weekend. Of course, Father's Day and Juneteenth and all all these um, the holidays. I mean, this is uh, quite quite something. We've really had a bunch of three day holidays this year. And we're looking at thirty thousand four hundred in the Dow, up five hundred eleven. Uh, it, it sounds fantastic. We've seen these big pops to the upside before, and they kind of give them back the next day. I don't think this is the case. I think that this is something a little more serious. With all the work that I did over the weekend, for certainly for my subscribers to my opening call, uh, we went through all, quite a lot of things in my uh, Sunday video, uh, which was, I actually think it was about an hour in length for my overview. And uh, some of the things that I was discussing was, in the tech, just a purely technical basis, this doji candle at a low at 29,653 in the Dow, Dow um, together with the on balance. Remember, when I'm looking at technicals, I talk about the MACD, the stochastic, and moving averages, especially the nine under the 14 or nine over the 14. I look at the on balance volume, I look at relative strength, I look at a lot of things. But there's also the pattern, and the pattern that we've been talking about for some time now is the pattern that I call, oh, where is it? It's right here. Let me just go to it. It's called the dreaded H pattern. And what that means is I look at basically three patterns, straight up, straight down. That's number one, arch, a cup formation, number two, arch formation, number three, and a combination of one and two or one and three. In this particular case, it's one and three, the dreaded H, where you come down very sharply and have a rally, and at a peak A or a peak B, the first or second peak, there's a turnaround, and it makes this arch formation that takes out this left side low. And the reason why it's red is because if you take that out, you have, in my methodology, Chapman Wave methodology, you have um, two or three sessions in which to close above the left side uh, high, sorry, the left side low. If you don't do that, then you have to wait for a whole new series of, of, of um, technicals to form to be able to get a, a, a vicious turnaround that gives you a brand new buy signal that can go to a buy mode. Well, in the H pattern, the 30,635 low that was made in May with that big pop to, in single leg A up to 33,272, then we made that arch formation and we went under it and one day we popped above it, and then the next day we went below it. And the next day, Friday, we went below it with a little doji candle. So that says any turnaround now above 30,635 has to, number one, be on a closing basis. Number two, you have to see a really sharp turnaround that is consistent with a move to the upside that follows through. It doesn't matter whether it's a daily chart or a one-minute chart, but you've got to have at least two sessions going much higher in this V-shaped pattern, preferably taking out a left side high of importance. In this case, that would be the high of, I think it was maybe Wednesday, of 31,011. And we're at this point, uh, 30,394. That's a huge ask. And you have to get the stochastic going from single digits to double digits, preferably 12 to 15%, somewhere around there. And you have to get the histogram in the MACD to turn up. So this is just the start of something. Yes, we are long. We're long from Friday. We've been a, a number of times we've been long. We're long from Friday. And... Uh, We'll just have to see where it goes. That's all you can do. You do your homework, and then you see. the week. If I had to use the weekly chart, we went underneath the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone, and now we're above it. In fact, we're just nicking the green line, which is the upper part of this little mini down channel that I call the inside Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. And we'll just have to see what happens. We've done one thing at a time, and that's all you can do. If you go to the S&P, you'll see that it's slightly different in that, yes, we did go underneath the 38.10 low of May, had a, three peaks to the upside, went to 41.77, and then arched over, took it out, 
So one day we went above it, couldn't hold above it, and now it's one, two, three, four. Even today, it is uh, one, two, three. This is five sessions, almost six sessions, five sessions. This this will be the sixth session. We don't know yet, uh, but it seems like it'll be obvious that it'll be the sixth session. But maybe it's the sixth session that still doesn't get above thirty-eight ten. It's at thirty-seven sixty-one right now, up a whopping eighty-seven percent. Uh, eighty-seven, sorry, percent. Eighty-seven points, up two point three nine. And here we do get the on-balance volume giving a beautiful W shape with a little V at the end. The stochastic is still only at 10%, uh, but it is above the single digits. But it's not making a nice turn to the upside. That's because of the look-back period. The look-back period doesn't allow moving averages to quickly reverse to the upside until, you've, you, until you either have a very big price movement on a closing basis or um, it takes a little time. And the histogram has started to improve for the first time in quite a while in the MACD. The 9 is still way underneath the 14. It makes 38.11. That 38.11 is uh, just about a point above that low that was made in May. But that's the 9-period exponential moving average, pink, because it's still way underneath the 38.68, 14-period moving average. So there's a lot of work to be done. And, and within that context, look at the QQQ. This is the NDX 100. Uh, up 2.75% uh, at 282.26. Now, to, putting it together, you've got in the Qs, the S&P, and the Dow, you've got a particular stock. Uh, some of you might have heard of it. It's kind of a fruit. A good question the other day was, um, why is an orange uh, one of the a few fruits named after its color? Of course, lemon does the same thing. Um, well, apple is having a beautiful move up 7.61 at 282, up 2.88. Oh, that's the Qs. Let me go back to Apple. Apple, someone must have had a heart attack there when I said 200 something. It's at 136, up 4.77. Uh, a beautiful move up 3.68%. And Nancy, I think it was in the den, I just saw. Uh, what, did, what did Nancy say? She held on to a position over the weekend. Uh, let, where did it go? Oh, have I lost it now? Oh, no, no, no. There it is. Apple on a rip this morning. Yep. Uh, she held on, I believe, to calls that she had and just got out of them. Bravo. Well, well done. And you uh, evidently were listening to a number of people from TFNN on Friday. And out Apple, 130 June 24 calls, and it's at 136.29 right now. Bravo. That. Fabulous action. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Now, if you had asked me this morning about Apple calls, I would have said if you have a number, oh, if you have only one Apple call, absolutely, take your profits and run. But if you had a number, I would have said absolutely, take half of them off, keep a little bit because there's a chance from the action of Apple on Friday to today with a MACD way above the low that was made, when it hit the low in May uh, 20th of 132.61 before it made that peak B, arch formation, the dreaded H pattern, and close underneath the left side low quite a few times. This looks to me, especially based on the weekly chart, that Apple actually could, it, it's just touched the 9 period exponential moving average. I think 138.32, the 14 period moving average, I think it's in the cars. I, in fact, I think Apple uh, is looking very good on a short-term basis. So I think I'll be back. Yep, uh, one question is about Google. We'll be back. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so this is quite incredible. I'll just do this for the moment. This is the 10-minute ESU-22. This is the September E-mini 10-minute uh, chart. Uh, it made uh, really a significant low. Um, I was uh, following this, let's see. There we go. That was a low at 10.50 on the 20, 20th, is that it? No, so that was, oh, it started off on the 17th. Um, it made a low around about 36.40, and it ran to a peak D. Remember in the chat, we we're always looking for Ds. Peak D, the fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. Turns around at a peak D, just above the orange line. You see this 200-period moving average. It pulls back, starts a brand new buy mode, goes peak A. B, C, and D again uh, in a left side, right side price time match. Comes in a little uh, short and a little short in time and price, just about one bar. And then it pulls back. It starts to brand new peak A, B, C. And the C goes uh, for a little while. Then it makes a D. Finally makes a D. And then it goes A, B, C, D. Goes to an E, pulls back. Now it's using the 200 period moving average as a support level. Is this not amazing? Look at it like, like a magnet. It goes at to it and then it pulls back. Goes to it, pulls back. Goes to it, pulls back. And now it's starting to reverse. You can see the technicals are getting a little stronger here. And then all of a sudden it becomes support and goes peak A, B, C, D, E. And then it goes A, B, C, D, E, F. And it pulls back. And it's got this beautiful trend line that's going up. And then it goes peak A, B, C1, C2, and then it goes D. And that D is right there at 23.20. That's 11.20 on the on the 20th. Um, that's during the day. Pulls back sharply. As a sudden spike goes to peak E, it's like a single leg up. Pulls back, makes an arch formation all above the 200 period moving average. And now there's big move to the upside. At this point, I'm calling it a B. I could give it an alternate count because it never took out the left side. No, this could be an extension of this peak E. It could be an F. But everything about it with the stochastic at 90%. This is a 10-minute chart. MACD very strong, but getting a little toppy. Uh, I, I have the on-balance volume right here. Says that's also a little bit toppy. So we could see a little digestive phase going on for a moment here. 
Most importantly, look at this. We've got a peak C1, C2. It's actually a peak C1, C2, C3 at this particular point in the one-minute chart. The MACD is pulling down. This is for those of you who use MACD, the moving average convergence divergence. I've even had webinars where I, I, I've discussed this in great detail. How can you, you could, how do you use, remember MACD, almost always the green line, the nine period differential, almost always follows the price movement. Every once in a while, it fails to do that. It starts to go in a different direction. What the stochastics down at 63%, the on balance volumes pull back. What on earth could you use to keep you in the trade? The nine above the 14 period moving average. Look how it's been green ever since this morning at, this is the one minute chart at 9.08 this morning. It went green. And even with all the fluctuations since then, Here's a chapter wave notation. It's still green. It looks to me as if this is going to be key because if it suddenly pops into 30, it's a 3769. If you suddenly see 3773, that's going to be very significant because that would start to help the MACD improve. At the same time, what we're looking at here is key support on a very short term basis. I'm talking about a one minute chart. Don't get carried away. Below Closing below 358. For three out of five one-minute bars, we'll say, uh-oh, now you're in for a consolidation. Well, what did we just get? We got our leg D to the upside, oops, D capital, capital to the upside in the Chapman wave, a lowercase to the downside, A, B, C, D, E, F, G are the letters we use. It's at D that other things can happen. You can even get an alternate count. Here's your G slash C. We'll see what happens because we're up 96 points in the E-mini. All right, that's the one-minute chart. And to top it off, you've got, as I said before, the 10 minute is in a leg B. And now, I, because the stochastics are 92% and the MACD is getting a little overboard, but still very, very strong, I can make that an up arrow. It's in a buy mode. Let's get back to our story here. So, now what we want to do is to go through some of the other indices. Um, so, a couple of things I, a question came in. Could I look at Google? Yes. And also, another question is to what, what's your position now? For subscribers, well, my position is I'm going to have a sip of tea. And I'm going to say that my position is, I uh, look at Apple, now it's at 136.64. It's now a little bit above the, the pink nine period moving average. Uh, first of all, let me do Goog. Googie. I do Google. I don't do G O O G L. I use the Alphabet Inc. C stock. That's your core Google uh, Alphabet uh, trading up 3.93%, uh, up 84 at 2,242. So the question is Good morning, Basil. Good morning. Um, I would like your analysis of Google. Is, is now a good time to start a long position? Thank you. I'm going to say, I like Google very much. I'm putting it in the category of Amazon. Um, let me just show you Amazon. You'll see, I, I'll show you Amazon. Just typing it in, there it is. It's almost the same pattern. It had the arch formation, a successful arch because it never took out the May low. It's trading up 4.9%, uh, up 5.23 at 111.46. And if you even look at an, a Netflix, uh, which is above the left side low in the arch formation, although it went to peak A, peak B, and a peak C, uh, but it pulled back and it's holding okay. It's up $1.77 to $177.23. If you put it together with Apple, I'm going through the the, the, the um, I'm going through the old traditional FANG stocks or F A A A N G. So 129.04 was the low in Apple. It's trading now at 136.62. It did take out the left side low. So there's a little bit of a difference in the pattern. Um, and Alphabet, which is M -A -M Meta now, I'm uh, sorry, Facebook, which is now Meta, is a, a, a much worse uh, a chart pattern. This is the uppercase A Eiffel Tower in the monthly chart. It's trading up 214, up 1.3% up at 165. It's in much, it's in dire trouble. So I'm going to say that Goog is the one that I like a lot. And the answer to your question is yes, right now, 22.46. What is Goog? Goog I think Goog L is really the trading vehicle, trading at 22.41. Yes, I'm going to say, Tim, I would start the position. 
I would start the position thinking that I need more evidence that it is a longer term play, meaning not just a near term pop and drop, but and not just a near term uh, two week rally, but a potential three to four week rally. I think we've got the we've got the ingredients here to say. If I look at the invest, what well, was the I A I A? I've often I've given talks every once in a while for the group. I always forget the name. American Institute of Investors, something like that. Um, their numbers on the bearish or the people that think that the market is uh, going to go into a recession said, are so high. I don't think I've seen those numbers before. So all I can say is on a more than short term basis, I'm really talking if we can survive into Thursday going into Friday, not even getting close to the lows of fr this past Friday, but more like uh, the low of the day comes from this street with upside in all these different areas. I like it. So I'm going to suggest start positioning group. I'll follow it over the next few days. And we'll Add to it. What? Okay, I'll answer your question. I'll be right if you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yeah, so we're back. So just as I said before, at 22.43, that's the one I'm looking at now, but it'll probably be GOGL that you have to trade, which is at almost the same price, 22.37. I'd start the position, but treat it as a starter position because we don't know. We need to see the close. We need to see, is this a one-day rocket to the upside that we've seen so many times? And for subscribers to my opening call, um, we have fortunately been along those very, very big turns to the upside. But the, the easiest thing to do would have been just to be short all the way and just uh, uh, 
treat the, the, the pop-ups as pop-ups uh, as a separate thing altogether. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, I, I, I do think that the pattern I'm looking at, let me go back to the Goog because that's the one I trade, I, I don't trade, uh, the one I follow cl more closely than anything than the uh, G-O-O-G-L. Uh, I did draw in a cup formation and then it broke down and it went lower. This is still the potential for a cup formation, but, oh, you can talk about inverse head and shoulders and all that. And that's really not the issue. To me, the issue is that the MACD is way better than it was. The stochastic is higher than it was in that May low. The, the on-balance volume is rallying. And the nine will become a positive and go green if by Thursday to Friday, as long as we can try to get to 22.64 or higher, there's a good chance that it's going to finally turn green. That weekly chart needs a lot of work. So within the context of the FANG stocks, uh, what we are looking at now is something a little bit different in that you've got two of them are much better than three. So uh, that says to me, you've got to be individual. And that's what I've been saying all the time. One of the reasons why for subscribers, I'd said just as for the moment, yes, we've got a, a former huge one. In the, in the Dow, this is one of the longest lasting Dow stocks that we've had. We've lost Honeywell. Uh, oh, we've got Honeywell back. Honeywell's back, and that's good. So Honeywell's back. It kind of goes together with the one that we've got uh, long, and it's doing very nicely today. Uh, it's it's a, a transformer. In other words, it's more from a, a has-been to something that really could become quite exciting in 2022. We don't know, but we're attempting that this is the chance. Um, I had one that I, I want to talk about because um, I got a question about it from someone who bought it and did not get stopped out because they didn't take my stop. This is CH. This is Chico's Fashions, Women's Wear. So um, we bought it uh, the other day. We bought it on the 16th at $5.49. And then I said, okay, let's make the stop $5.19. And the reason is it went underneath, it would have, uh, the 20, 522 was the the 14 period exponential moving average. And I thought I'd give it a little bit of room. And unfortunately, that was the exact low of the day on Thursday, uh, Thursday Friday. Friday. Uh, and it, it, it stopped us up. There are some people, it was there for less than a minute. It just, it just stopped. It's like there was, Someone said, ah, for 519, somebody wants to sell. I'm in. And then that's it. So what happened is it closed really well. It closed in the 555 uh, after hitting 561. Um, five, sorry, five, 558 level on Friday. And I wanted to try to buy it again today, get back in. And now look at this. It is up. Seven and a half percent, up 42 cents at 592. And that's what I've been saying all the time. Look at what you are studying separately from your from from what you read, from what the sector is doing. If you've got an this is one of the few times where I say if you've got an individual stock that is holding really well in this environment, that's a really good sign. Don't think of the sector. I mean, if I go go through the sector of the women's wear sector, <laughs> some of them look. I, I just I actually I haven't even looked at this for ages. F R A N. I think that's F R A N. Isn't that Francisco something or other? Let me just see if it's even a symbol. Am I right? Fran. No. All right. I, I I can't remember what it is. Anyway, some of the some of these in the women's wear really get just knocked down terribly. So C H S. Is, look at this. It's fantastic. Uh, look at the weekly chart, how it's improving. Monthly chart needs some work. But uh, CHS, and here it is at 591. So I could have done two things. One is I could have just dived in this morning and treated like a, a, um, one of my screamers, single-digit screamers, and said, let's just buy it at the open and put a stop in of even 15 cents. Uh, what was the low? 553, and it opened at 555. And just let it rip. Because it's it, we need 
peak D. That's what we're looking for. What the whole idea was to get to a peak D. Well, we're in leg D right now. So I, you know, I talk. I want. I want to talk about things that work and things that don't work. Now, what's really important is I, I want you to give that as an example of why I, I, I'd be prepared to look at Google in a positive way right now because its chart chart pattern is slightly better than the ones that are weaker, like a meta, etc. So, okay. Then I had a question that just came in a, a little while ago, which I wrote down. In fact, I did not write it down. I thought I'd remember it. And I do remember it. It's H-A-L Halliburton. But I'm just going to put this down here, uh, H-A-L, um, because I like to write down what I'm asked uh, each day. So Halliburton uh, as if once in about Hall Halliburton. So Zip hasn't told me what he's doing with Halliburton, but this is what I can say. We've spoken about this before, and it was on its way to a peak D in the daily chart. The last peak was G, and the, the peak before was G, around about 42, and then it pulls back to 30, 32, and then that's, $10, that's $10. Halliburton Oil Service screams up to 44, and then if it was a round number high, it was probably just under it. 40, 43.99. Well, if it's just under it, that is about as just under it as you can get. 43.99, not 44 round number. Peak D has a sign in Doji candle the next day. Gaps down, gaps down, pulls back, pulls back, gaps down. And what does it do? It drops right to the 200 period exponential moving average of 31.82. Now the question comes, what, what next? So all I can say is, I don't like this pattern because this particular pullback, even though I, I can see a bit of a bounce here, this pattern that I look at in the weekly chart is a peak F. I've got a question mark above it because you know, it's only one week that it went underneath the 9 period and 14 period moving averages. But it did close decisively under it. Look at the MACD deflecting lower in the weekly chart. Look at the stochastic deflecting lower now at 54%. Look at the on-balance volume giving you this exact top. Well, one bar. Sorry, one bar earlier than the exact top. I, I, I would just say if you're in it and a core position for much lower, that's fine. But if you think of this as a trade, a near-term trade, yes, you could buy it now, 33.72. Personally, if you put it together with CVX, which is different because it's a multinational oil, look at this pullback. Uh, it went from 182.40 on the 8th of June down to 145.79, a leg B, and now it's gonna, it looks like it could be a trough B. You didn't get to the 200 period moving average, but it has the same pattern in the weekly where it went sideways, had a big spike to the upside with lousy technicals, and now it's pulling back sharply. Look at Exxon. And of course, I'm talking about multinationals. I'm not talking about the oil service. But Exxon Mobil has pulled back, not as sharply as CBX or the others, but still from the 105 area to the 85s, and now it's at 91. It's a much better chart pattern, Exxon, but it's the same category. Look at Slumberjay, SLB. Uh, Slumber J, uh, I haven't updated. I'll update it during the break. I'll be back. That's a chapter. Back. That's a chapter. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperwhite's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And I still say that slumbers are up 2.28 right now, 38.92, up 6.2% at a P uh, E top at 49.83. Uh, 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 on the 8th, and we're underneath the 200-period uh, moving average, having a nice session today, but they all look the same. They all look like they are going to consolidate in some of course, in the oil service business. Let's go to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Basil. It's nice to talk to you again. Yes, good to speak with you. And you are looking at what? I'm in the stock Clovis, which you've probably talked about in the past, and it can do some pretty crazy things. And, and uh, I did buy into it. Uh, I'm not sure if you have the right symbol. It's a CLVS. CLVS I, is Clovis uh, Oncology. Yeah, yes, up, yeah up. Clovis Oncology. It's at 216 right now. It's only up 98 uh, cents. Up 82 percent. Wow. So did you get in because you liked the action on Friday? Were you already in on Friday? I've been buying into this uh, when it was at its lows. It got down to 58 cents. And that day I I didn't buy any shares, but I bought uh, call options out to 2024, January 2024 what, what, dollar calls. What would the, what would the cool I options be trading I think at? My, I'm in under a dollar. I don't remember my exact price, but I think it's around 80 cents. I have, you know, I think 3,000 shares of it too. So I just, yeah, uh, yes. it's a stock I've traded off and on going back to 2019. So I know, I know. you've, you've about, had least, this on your list. At least the way the stock acts anyways. So this is a very interesting one because it, it, being a, in the biotech business, you expect sudden pops to the upside and then it gives it back. But actually, this one just made a serious, although at a very low price, the percentage gain was still very big, but it really had a series of um, sudden spikes to the upside and almost immediately would give it back. But there was one really good that was in about a year ago. No, a little more than a year ago. It was March, April. It must have been in March of last year. It went peak A, peak B. Peak C, and it actually made for the one of the only times in years it made a full peak D, almost at the 200 period moving average back in April of last year. And then it took a tumble from just under three to what you said the other day was 0.58. So this has got this beautiful cup formation. So what it did today, even, uh, even as you've been waiting online, it almost went to the 250, 200 period moving average. Uh, that it, uh, it it avoided last time when it ran on a April the 6th. 
of 2022, it went to three, 314, and the 200 period moving average at that on that particular day was 330. So, but this is a leg B. Now, it doesn't, when it's, the, when the move is this size, let me just go back. I should actually have this fully notated. I think we lost, I lost some of the notation. But this last made a peak D when it made a low back in May of 2021 at 4.99 it screamed all the way with a single day gap up on the 9th of June to 7.24, close at the low of the day, and that was it. In fact, that was it for the next, uh, what was this? <laughs> this was June of 2021, and here we are, June of 2022. So for, for a year, since it popped up that day uh, at PD, it, uh, it just hasn't done anything. It's gone lower and lower with slight... Very nice percentage. You can't complain on a stock that goes from, like on the eighth, on the nineteenth of August of 2021, it goes from 406, and in two big moves, it goes to the 50-period moving average of five dollars. So that's that's a pretty big percentage gain. But this is one of the best that it's had in a long, long time, and you're in it. So tell me what you're going to do, or you are doing. Oh, I'm just raising my stop. I just have a trailing stop, and it's. Tricky when you have a day this big <laughs> to not do something. I'll, I might take a little money off, but I just want to try to, something acting this well, at least at the moment. And the fact that it is, you know, only in leg B on the daily, it's an A on the weekly. So we'll, we'll just see what it can do. This has been a series of days now, not just a single day pop up. So we'll just see how it acts. So the only thing I would say, Brent, because I, I know that other times when you've called, when you've had moves like this, by the time you've called me, you've already um, organized your, your, your trade uh, position to such an extent that you've either taken off some and you're holding either the stock and you've taken off your, your options or you, you are just holding the options you've taken. So in this particular instance, my only concern is that I, I certainly don't know what the news is. It could be anything. But what I will say to you is that the, the stochastic is only at 70%. The MACD is very strong. On balance volumes, a tad overbought. If I put the picture together, this is where I would, t this is, you know, you ask my opinion about the stock. I'm just saying this is where I actually would take something off. But I like the idea of keeping, if you actually have the stock and not just uh, options, I, this is where I would, if you've got it down lower, you take the, I, I hate just to call it a gamble because in, in biotech, you really are, you know, the market has, some of these biotechs over the last week or two have had spectacular moves, and some of them have been spectacular moves down, not up. So you never really know. And I'm just saying that in this particular instance, I would still treat it as a biotech. I'd, I'd try to keep uh, a positive aspect in the sense that it's had one, two, three. This is the fifth day of upside activity with big moves. That's the first time it's done it in a while. That's a big positive. But I do think they're taking a little bit off makes sense because it is only because it's a biotech and you just, I mean, even, look, as we're talking, it hit 240 moments ago and now it's at 192. Well, my calculation says that's 50 cents off the high of the day, 50 cents off $2.40. I mean, we're talking about, you know, 20% sudden, sudden pullback. So that's all I'm saying is that I, I'd still treat it as a biotech. Let it prove to you that it's something more than just a, a one-night stand. It's something that really can keep going, and that's really what, what you want to see. All right. Thank you so much, Basil. Have a great day and a great rest of your week. Let me just say to you, congratulations. Great pick. And uh, it just I'm going to be watching it again. You always point this out to me. I'll be watching it and see what happens. Thank you very much for calling and congratulations. Take care, Basil.
Thank you. So, folks, uh, that was we were talking about Clovis uh, Oncology CLVS now trading at one point ninety five. Must have heard us and now saying, "Ha, watch me do this." I'm going back to two dollars. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Okay, but you never can tell. So, I had a question about in the den about what was the other one? Um, oh, did I, I saw it? Uh, A E. What was that stock? Uh, A V E O A V E O is this in the uh, pharma? Yep, this is A V O pharma. Oh, <laughs> Brent should have seen this. Brent, here's another one up thirteen uh, percent at five dollars and twelve cents. A V E O A V E O uh, up sixty two at five dollars and twelve cents. The A P P P C P P and this could be an E. And there's your W formation. Oh, we'll talk about this, Pat. Since we've turned above the 200 feet exponential moving average, good eye. I'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, well, folks. We're back. Dow is up uh, 587. SMB is up 98. So I just heard. Uh, so um, I, I think Larry is either not feeling well or something is happening that. Uh, um, I was asked if I could fill in for the hour. Yes, I can, because I want you to do a whole bunch of the commodities. I haven't done anything in that area for, I usually do that on my show. I haven't done it yet. So um, I will do that. So AVEO, great, great uh, uh, trade. It just went out. Congratulations in the den. 
It went to 5.15, it's trading at 5.12 right now. 5.03 is the 200 period moving average, and so far it's above it. But it is a leg E, and the stochastic is very weak at 53, and the MACD is good, not great, and the on-balance volume is running. So I, I, I said this is the potential for a cup formation. It's like a U and then another U, and a question in the den came in, could I look at the XLU? So I'll do that right now. So this this so far is acting well. I would say that 478 to 482 is probably the support. You've got to watch an AVEO. XLU, I did some work on this over the weekend, um, and it just looked terrible. It went underneath all the support levels. It's got a peak F in the, uh, this is the S&P Select Utilities Fund. Doesn't look good at all. In fact, it's really, um, uh, the H pattern in the weekly chart says watch out because if it closes under 64, that's a real problem. It's already intra month. It's gone below support level. So I'll do a little bit more of, uh, when I do the bonds and I, when I do uh, Larry's hour. I can't say I'm doing Larry's show, but I'll do his hour and I'm going to go through a whole bunch of the commodities. I'll go through the dollar. You know, we're still long the dollar, uh, even though on a very short term basis, it's pulled back from 105.79. So stay tuned. I'll be back. I'll be doing Larry's hour, I believe. He's on a YouTube. And won't be trade with the seed. It will be my hour. We can get the market space in the February methodology. And uh, that's it. Don't be quick. And we'll be back on the